Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're talking about skin tones and DaVinci Resolve. Quick and easy way to make sure the skin tones in your image are perfect. Let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Ed. I am a working videographer and photographer out of Melbourne, Australia. Um, I made a transition over to DaVinci Resolve about a year ago when 16 came out and there was that big explosion. I think it might've been more than a year and I've been consistently using it. And one of my favorite features is how easy it is to correct skin tones in this program. If you're looking how to get teals and oranges and cinematic, cinematic looks, this is not the video for you. This is just about making sure your skin tones are on point. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I recently shot with a client and the footage you are gonna see from that. It's a local gym in my area and they have three different color lights. They've got a really harsh purple, they've got a green floating around and they've got some old school yellow sort of tungsten lights in the ceiling. Mix that in with some windows. You've basically got four shades of color going in which meant an absolute cluster for my camera. I did set the white balance. I was on a pretty tight schedule there and what I had to do was make move from room to room with different lighting and really didn't have time to set my color balance each time. So unfortunately, I had to do it in post. And that's what I'm gonna go through today, guys. I'm gonna make it nice and easy for you, nice and simple. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get it done. All right, guys, first of all, there was a costume change. I fucked up, forgot something, forgot to include something in this that is very important. I didn't wanna miss out on it because some of you would be able to get away with not doing that little piece extra, but it would most likely two thirds of the time result in a pretty yucky image and that's not what we want. We want quick and easy, and but we also want it to be effective. There's no point of being easy if it looks like shit. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve ready to color grade. Now I've got this clip from a recent shoot that I did with a local gym. The one major problem I had with this scene, as you can see, is Sarah's skin is so orange and so saturated because we've got a friend up here just about here in the scene, and that's a tungsten light that is casting all sorts of yellow over the scene. You can see there's a bit of yellow through the floor on this machine, and it's kind of ruining the skin tones, and it's not a very good time. I've already color graded this, guys, so over here, I've set my white into my black, I've done some contrast, I've added in the saturation to make the rest of the scene look good, and now I wanna fix these skin tones. The way I always go about fixing my skin tones, guys, and probably, I'm not sure if this is a typical way to color grade, but this is how I do it. I like to have all my colors, saturation, all that in the same sort of level on the grade. So I've got my blacks and whites, I've got my contrast, and here's where I do my colors. Now, if you wanted to do your colors, but make sure that two nodes don't interact with each other while they are in the same sort of segment, if you will, all you've got to do is press Alt-P and it's going to bring up a new node and make sure it's connected to a channel mixer. So once you've pressed Alt-P, you can see we've got two nodes stacked on top of each other. They're in the same level of the grade but they will flow on together and join up here and move, move forward down the grade, if you will. What that means is I can interact with this one and whatever happens in this node is not gonna affect this node and whatever happens in this node is not gonna affect this node. Very, very good for altering specific colors. This is very, very commonly used for skin tones and it is an awesome, awesome technique. So our setup is gonna be our vector scope here. You're gonna make sure you have your skin tone indicator on. If you do not see that, all you gotta do is click on this menu, little menu here and just click this button here. It's gonna show it up. That little line is exactly what it suggests. It's a skin tone indicator. Once you've selected the skin tones, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, in a minute you want this blob of mess to be up this way. Now to make this super, super simple for us guys to make sure we've got the right area selected, what I want you to do is come up to your highlight tool, click highlight, and we're gonna come over to our qualifier down the bottom here. Now, as you can see, now that I've got highlight selected, what highlight does will show you only what's happening in that node. If you put it on, it's only gonna highlight exactly what's in that node. So as you can see, as I press the qualifier and drag it across Sarah's skin, it's only showing me what I've selected. If I take the highlighter off, goes away. So now that I've got the skin tone selected, what I want to do is come down here and do clean black and clean white. Now you might be asking, Ed, what does that do? It's exactly as the name suggests. Da Vinci is really, really clever at the way they just name things the way that they are. Um, it just keeps your blacks clean and your white clean. So it doesn't, if you are going to use any of the offset tools or, you know, put any colors in your shadows or your highlights, it's not going to bleed over to your blacks. It's going to make sure that your blacks are black your whites are whites. The other thing I like to do is just to make sure is I want to drag the saturation slider all the way up, which means I'm going to take all the orange into account when I'm grading this or all the things that I've qualified. And with our luminance, I want you to do a low soft and a high soft. I usually go around eight. All the softening does is make sure that 
when you are doing the grade, it doesn't go from one luminance value to the next one and then just cut off that grade. It's gonna slowly, gradually fade away. So as you can see now in the shadows, it's a sort of a soft bleed into the other elements of the gym, rather than just being, if we take this all away, you can see it's all pixely and it's all very harsh. So it goes basically from one pixel having the grade on it to the other pixel not having it. If we take all this back, bring this all back, it just, it's a bit softer. So it's gonna sort of lead into the other areas rather than just being a hard cutoff point for your grade. It's gonna help your grades look more realistic and as if it was actually shot that way rather than you doing a bad color grading job. Last thing you wanna do is see pixelated colors, especially in someone's skin. It's gonna come up straight away. People are gonna notice it. So now that I've got that explained, guys, this is probably the most simple grade that you've ever seen in your life. Um, on the indicator, you can see that a blob of white and color here um, which is everything we have selected and seen these are in the right direction So Sarah's skin tones are actually on the right sort of path, but they are a little bit oversaturated So all we want to do grab our saturation slider and as you can see it is going to reduce the saturation Now I'm gonna go for about a 33 And then I'm gonna take the highlighter off and you're gonna see I've basically fixed her skin tones So now you might be wondering Ed what happens if you know this little blob of color is out to the side here. You know, I've got a real yellow hue on my colors. As you can see, you've got these six little squares here. Red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. So if your little blob of whiteness over here is over this way, because you've stuffed up the color balance with all that, all you've got to do is come over to your offset tool. And as you can see, as I move that around, it pushes the colors around and you can offset it that way. Now you do have to go by feel a little bit. So if you add a little bit of yellow into it, and it's probably a little bit too saturated for the rest of the scene. You do want to make sure that you are correcting that through the saturation or the color boost and making sure they're all lining up. So I always recommend clicking on the highlight and just sort of going on and off to make sure it's blending into the scene really well. This was a really easy example for me because it was just her skin tones and that orange was so obvious that we, it needed to be reduced even on the machines around it. So this was a nice easy fix. But in general guys, you wanna make sure that these colors are lining up over here. And remember that if they're off in some random direction, use the offset tool to make sure you push in the right direction to get this indicator over this line. And it pretty much just matches up as you can see. As the movement of the dot moves around, it just follows over here on the vector scope. So really easy guys, you just can use the offset tool, the vector scope, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of color boosting, you know, move it the way you need to, to make sure it fits in with the rest of the scene. And you've got nice and easy skin tones. That is it guys, nice and easy skin tones. It's really, really easy to use the qualifier to eliminate anything you don't want. I think skin tones are something that are really important to get right in your footage. It's something that will set you apart. I think Vinci Resolve obviously being something that was typically a Coloring Suite has just got so many more tools to just get the best colors out of your images and to make sure that your footage is looking schmicko. I've recently switched over to the A7S III, um, which has been awesome and much easier, much better color profile, but I know a lot of people out there are still shooting on the A7 III. It's still by a B cam or whatever camera it is, you can sometimes stuff up the skin tones, mainly Sony's, let's be honest. It's not nearly as complicated as some people will make it out to be. Um, but by no means, guys, this is not an in-depth guide to color grading. This is just quick and dirty, nice and simple. I like to keep tutorials quick, get you guys moving through, because you might be halfway through an edit, and this is the video you're looking for, and I don't want to waffle on and tell you my life story, or you know, tell you 13 things you don't need to know, just so you can get to the one that you do want to know. So that is it from me, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you again soon.